All right, guys, 2019 Kawasaki Vulcan Vicero. Thank you, Wood Cycle Country. Thank you, Rollick. Thank you, everyone, all of you out there. If you're watching this video uh, and you've enjoyed some of mine in the past, please hit that subscribe button. It really, really helps me out. We have grown the channel insanely over the summer. I want to keep that growth up into the fall. I want to grow even bigger and larger so I can take out cooler bikes and greater spots, albeit this is an awesome place. Very happy. Also, smash that like button and leave a comment for me if you have a question. I do want to show you guys why I love the Vicero right off the bat. I have a tripod with me. Look at that. My tripod is in there with my hat. Very cool. And on the other side is my backpack with the rest of my camera equipment. So, Vicero for the win. Yo, what is up guys, Duke DC here. Welcome to another video. We are out here in New Braunfels, Texas. See, I'm learning. Uh, and real huge shout out to the boys over at Woods Cycle Country. Uh, of course, linked in the description down below if you are from the New Braunfels area, you are looking for a motorcycle, a side-by-side, -side, or any number of power sport items. They have got you covered. And as always, this video is brought to you by Rollick. Rollick is a company connecting consumers like you and me to a network of certified dealers like Woods Cycle Country to provide the most transparent buying experience. When it comes to ATVs, side-by-sides, RVs, and of course, motorcycles like this absolutely gorgeous 2019 Kawasaki Vulcan Vaquero. Uh, this is a really exciting bike for me, and it's not one that I would normally choose. So I get pretty interested when I'm doing things like this. Uh, this is obviously a cruiser-style motorcycle from Kawasaki. Now, we're going to break down all the specs, all the features, and basically what makes this a really high competitor against things like Harley Davidson's, Indian motorcycles, or any of the other Japanese manufacturers variants of cruiser style bikes. Probably the most important factor here, we are looking at an MSRP of $16,799. So this is by uh, no means an inexpensive motorcycle, albeit for everything that you get here, I do think that there's a lot of value for money. Uh, especially when you're looking at things like Harley Davidson's that are gonna have a lot of the uh, same kind of features here. We've got a radio, we'll get into everything, the side bags, the amount of power, the horsepower, the engine, etc., cetera, uh, that are costing much higher than this into the 20s low 20s, mid 20s that are essentially the same bike. Down here we have a 52 degree 1700 cc V-twin that is producing 107 pound feet of torque and bear with me here, this was the hardest fact to find about this bike. 72 to 77 horsepower. Now bear in mind that is a figure from a 2016 model. I searched high and low for horsepower numbers for the Kawasaki of Vaquero 1700 for 2019. Could not find anything. Uh, Kawasaki very openly publishes most if not all of their torque figures for the bikes that they sell, but they're very hesitant to publish the horsepower figure which makes you think well, horsepower changes from bike to bike, different dynos, and maybe that's why, where torque is different in that regard. I've never understood that, but still an incredibly impressive amount of power coming out of a huge, huge engine here. As you can see, we've got two side bags here on the rear, each one giving you 10 gallons of space, uh, so 20 gallons in total. We've got a top speed of roughly 149 miles per hour, and with this massive front wind cowl here, uh, you wouldn't feel much, if not any of that. Right before I brought this bike here to do the film, I took it for a rip to see if I enjoyed it. I like to do that before I you know, sit here and give you guys a breakdown, walk around. Um, the only thing I can say about the wind protection is that you do get some buffeting on your helmet with this stock windscreen on. However, I'm sure there are aftermarket options that give you a bit more coverage. Uh, and as for the body, your legs, your hips, your chest, absolutely no wind at all, which is great. It's gonna give you longevity when you're riding. It's going to increase your comfort for both the rider and the passenger. As you can see here, you've got a nice, pretty plush pillion seat, albeit lacking some of the square footage on some of the more kind of cruiser touring focused models uh, that are better for pillions that have kind of backrest options or larger seats. We've got forward uh, to mid controls. I say forward to mid because these aren't all the way slung forward like you would see on some kind of cruiser motorcycles, but it is incredibly comfortable. Something that I love with bikes this big, and this is an 883 pound motorcycle, that is the curb weight, so that's all fluids ready to ride, is that it has coactive braking. So that's essentially Kawasaki's linked braking. That means that when you are braking with the front brake, it is going to be engaging the rear for you. 
Now, that's a fantastic safety feature. It allows you kind of peace of mind that you are getting optimal braking, especially with a bike so heavy. Uh, now, 883 pounds for this class of motorcycle is not too bad at all. Up in the front here, we have a pretty beautiful display. So you've got a lot of analog meets digital, and this is kind of a old world meets new world design. So you've got an analog tachometer, an analog speedometer, but you've got some digital readouts in the center. You have AM, FM, and wideband radio that are coming out of speakers on both sides, the right and left here. In terms of controls, you've got cruise control in this bike. Cruise control can be activated from third gear or higher between 35 and 85 miles per hour. You also have options for iPod or Sirius XM radio. Keeping with the theme of the rear side cases, you do have storage cubbies on both sides that are key lockable. Uh, and that's to mention that these side cases are also lockable. In terms of some of the dimensions, you have a 5.3 gallon gas tank. Uh, this bike is incredibly new. I think it has five miles on it. I was averaging about 27 to 30 miles per gallon. That being said, uh, sometimes after you break a motorcycle in, or of course different riding conditions from maybe what I rode on the way here, you can improve that number. Uh, another thing to mention, this has a 28.7 inch seat height. That's going to be great for some of the vertically challenged like myself. Again, 5 foot 9, 30 inch inseam. I can flat foot and control this bike brilliantly. And something I need to mention before we start the test ride is it is so incredibly balanced. I enjoyed the test ride here very much. Uh, with motorcycles this big, some people are scared of them. When I first started reviewing bikes, I stuck away from cruisers and big touring motorcycles because I was genuinely afraid that I would drop it, that the weight was too much, that the size was too much. Uh, and if I've learned anything, it's that I'm, I'm eating my words. Uh, these are some of the most balanced bikes that I've ever ridden. They're some of the easiest to ride, both in low speed and of course in higher speed situations. Uh, I've really grown accustomed to actually enjoying my ride on cruiser bikes. I was rolling here on it and just thinking like, damn, this is a beautiful motorcycle on a fantastic day. It's a little overcast, probably low 80s, and uh, hey, it beats 100 degrees and sunny any day. Down here, you're gonna notice that it has ABS KACT. So of course, this motorcycle comes with an anti-lock brake system. Uh, the KACT is the Kawasaki Advanced Coactive Braking Technology 2. So this is the second iteration of that technology. Now, if I had to nitpick from just looking at the bike and having ridden it a little bit to get to this location, one of the things that jumped out at me at first, there's two actually, uh, the mirror placement. I don't know if this is more adjustable or something that you know you could swap out relatively easily in the aftermarket, but these mirrors both are intrusive. They're coming kind of towards the rider in a strange way. And although they do provide a very visible sight line behind you, I do find that their position could be a little bit dangerous if you were going from not holding onto one of the bars to quickly trying to get back to it in some sort of a safety uh, situation. So those I'd want to change. The other thing is cruise control. Cruise control, of course, existing on this motorcycle. I'm not a huge fan of the button layout. Uh, and again, these are very nitpicky items. They're just things that I noticed when I was riding. Uh, I've been on a lot of bikes that have cruise control and most of those are so intuitive that you don't need to even study beforehand and figure out how the system works. You can hop on it and boom, switch it on. It's easy peasy on this one. I was struggling to find it. And oddly enough, it is on the right side here. Uh, you're gonna have both your starter switch, your kill switch above that. And then below you have your mode switch. You can switch between power modes and below that, you're gonna have the two buttons that activate your cruise control, one to turn the whole system on, the other to set it and then increase or decrease the speed. A few things that I absolutely love about this bike, having just ridden it a little bit thus far, uh, the seat is incredibly comfortable, immensely comfortable. The seating position, the ergonomics as a whole, this is a very comfort focused motorcycle. Uh, the sound, the sound coming out of these stock pipes is actually pretty damn good. Now, I think most people would wanna change these out for something else, um, straight pipes of some sort, Van Eyes. I'm not really sure what goes on Kawasaki Cruisers as a more of a sports bike guy myself, but I did like the beautiful sound coming out of this massive 52 degree twin. And oddly enough, I have been missing analog tachometers on a lot of the entry level uh, or otherwise motorcycles that I've reviewed in the recent past. So it's nice to see an analog tach, an analog uh, speedometer, and really kind of going back to the roots of motorcycling, all this digital TFT stuff is super cool. But at the end of the day, a bike is supposed to be this beautiful connection with the outside world. And I felt that more than I've felt in a long time this morning riding this particular motorcycle. So very happy about those things. All right guys, so uh, without further ado, let's take this thing for a spin. Ooh, y'all wanna hear me rev it? All right, I'm gonna rev it for you. It's nice and warm, don't worry, I already took it for that seven mile run. Sounds good. 
Sounds flipping good, 52 degree, 1700 cc twin. These things are so hyper balanced. All right, so you guys have seen the walk around. Now you want to know, Duke of DC, what do you think about riding this 883 pound behemoth? Uh, well, luckily, before starting this video, I was able to take this thing for a few miles of a run. Uh, and just from that alone, I can say I'm such an enormous fan of this bike already. I did not think I would like this motorcycle. You know, generally speaking, I'm a little stickler when it comes to cruisers for no reason. Absolutely no reason. Because every single cruiser I've ever ridden, every huge touring bike I've ever ridden, has given me so much joy... Uh, and I've come off of them going like, oh my god, do I, am I a cruiser guy now? And this is no different. I mean, if anything, this is one of the finer ones I've ridden. It feels incredibly balanced. The power is fantastic. 20 miles per hour down here. Look at all these camping spots in the river. You guys have seen this area. We are in New Braunfels. Uh, that V-twin sounds amazing. The suspension is beautifully plush as it should be on a motorcycle like this uh, the KACT the coactive braking or linked braking is wonderful it lets me think about the road ahead rather than uh, where my feet are I would never ever ever substitute it for a proper braking technique but I think on a motorcycle like this that weighs so much it's good to have peace of mind that when you are braking with the front you're braking with the rear at the same time oh I love this bridge we're gonna slow down here Dude, these cruisers are so ridiculously balanced and comfortable. Uh, I, I, can, <laughs> I can see one of these in my not-so-distant future. Something that I love about the Kawasaki lineup for these cruisers uh, is that they're not holding back. This isn't like a, a cruiser bike that is worse than a Harley-Davidson or an Indian or, or you know any of the bigger, uh, more kind of prestigious cruising competitors, but it comes in thousands upon thousands of dollars less. 16799 MSRP is an absolutely fantastic value for money considering you've got a radio, AM, FM, wideband. You've got the two side bags, 10 gallons each, of which I put a damn full-size <laughs> full tripod with a Manfrotto fluid head on uh, is inside one of those. And then my backpack with my A6500, all my lenses, everything like that, is in the other. This is a match made in heaven for a moto vlogger. Of course, the V-Twin sounds delicious i i could use a little bit more i could use a little more raw throatiness uh that i'm sure you could easily find with any more any number of aftermarket pipe sets and it's a shame that it doesn't come with its stock but at the end of the day i'm sure that it was a regulation that they had to meet whether it be epa for uh economy or or genuinely a sound regulation for these bikes Another thing I, I adore is the analog tack, the an analog speedometer, but then having in the center this kind of digital display that gives you certain things like, you know, your trip odometer, uh, your overall odometer, your average mile per gallon, which you can see is 30.9, so maybe that gives you an idea of how far that 5.3 gallon gas tank can take you. We are down here on River Road. Uh, my girlfriend and I were going to go camping here a couple weekends back. We never made it. We were... Uh, we were sitting on the couch watching Netflix and uh, it was about a hundred plus and we were just like, you know what? We're just gonna hang out this weekend. <laughs> I'm sure that's relatable. Painfully so. Six speed manual gearbox one down five up. Uh, forward mid controls. This I wouldn't call these forward controls. I would call them kind of mid controls. I like them nonetheless, don't get me wrong. Downshifts are smooth. Throttle response is a little gummy, which is something I've experienced in a few other cruisers and I wish it wasn't the case. Otherwise, the gearing is brilliant. Uh, in fifth, sixth gear, super low RPM, no vibration. I think that's a huge thing that people think about when they're buying a big V-twin is how much vibration. Uh, I can say without a shadow of a doubt, this produces less vibration than the CBR650R inline four-cylinder that I just took out that actually gave me kind of numb hands. 883 pounds, 
It's no small bike, but it certainly hides its weight well. I'm not a big cruiser rider either, but I picked up on this one super quickly. There's a little hesitation in second gear when you go for the uh, throttle there, and it feels like traction control, but I know it isn't because, you know, there's no wheel spin or anything like that. I think it's just a little gum in the throttle. Otherwise, just such a great ride. The comfort on this bike is second to none. I mean, I've been on some of the most luxurious comfort-oriented bikes that cost uh, literally twice as much as this and did not feel twice as comfortable. Probably felt equally comfortable. It's so smooth trying not to find those uh, those pegs. You don't have a ton of angle here, of course, more than what I've been doing. What are people gonna be concerned about here? What are, what are you, the consumer, looking for out of these test rides? Um, you probably just wanna see me have a good time. Well, there's no shortage of that on the Vulcan Viquero. I'm going to butcher that name. I, I said it right. I probably shouldn't do the little uh, at the end there. That's a little disingenuous on my part. I apologize. Oh, it's got power for days. 107 pound-feet of torque. Comes on low, too. 2,500-ish RPM, uh, which means that you just have torque right there when you first start going. Uh, and for a bike that weighs 880 plus pounds, that is important. You know, torque is what moves you, horsepower is what gets you going fast. Love it. I love it. Yeah, the cruise control thing, the mirrors, uh, they're, they're a little bit weird. They're, they're like forward towards me. Um, and so what I was saying is that in a situation where I had my hand here, which albeit you should always have both hands on the steering, um, if I went, oh, you see that? If I like went quickly to go back to it, I'd hit this first potentially. That or, you know, you'd have to go under it and be really cautious. I think it's something that over time, muscle memory, you would never find this to be an issue. Again, nitpicking. No motorcycle's perfect. It would be, it would be remiss of me to do a review and not say a couple things that irk me. Golly though, all that irking. That's going to fade away real quick. That is a hawk. Or a crow. As you can tell, very good with birds. Very good with birds here. I know them all. Hawk or a crow. Put those two in front of me, I got you. Heaps of grip. I Honestly, this is like a 9. This is like an 8.7 to 9. I'm going to give it an 8.7. Those two little things that irk me, just irk me a little too much. Uh, and 10 is just not happening. I don't want to give bikes 10s. If I've given a bike in a 10 in the past, it's just because I wasn't thinking straight. No bike is a 10. Because nothing is perfect. Perfection's like boring too. You would never want to be perfect. Otherwise, it picks up and goes. Picks up and goes. No hesitation for speed, that's for damn sure. All right, guys, so we are on our way back to Wood Cycle Country here in New Braunfels, Texas. If you're from the area you're looking for a 2019 Kawasaki Vulcan Vaquero or any number of different power sport items, please check them out. If you're not from here, uh, then go to GoRollick.com. It's going to be that first link in the description down below and see if you can't find one in your area uh, with a pretty good deal attached to it. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. Please smash that like button. Comment down below any questions that you have for me about this bike, about Go Rollick, about uh, Wood Cycle Country, about my preference uh, zebra cakes versus Twinkies. You know what? I want it all. Ask away. But be nice. For Christ's sake, what did your mom teach you? For goodness, all of you no manner having commenters can just skirt skirt out of here. Okay? Okay? And as always, I'll see you guys on the next one.
Peace.